was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man, who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea and he was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth and placed it in a tomb cut in the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day and the Sabbath was about to begin. The Gospel writers and the earliest creeds, in fact, make a conscious effort to mention that Jesus not only died, but was buried. In Christ, God has shared every facet of human experience, even the grave, a place of cold silence, a place of helplessness, a place where the last semblances of humanity disintegrate, a place of seemingly unanswered prayer. But Jesus, having entrusted himself to God, continues to trust even in the silence of the grave. You know, no provision had been made for his burial, which seeing as he'd been predicting his death for quite a time is unexpected. But God provides this unheard of disciple who is wealthy and well-connected enough to claim Jesus' body from Pilate that he might be provided a grave with a rich man in his death. And hard on the heels of his burial comes only the waiting and rest of Sabbath. And even as we use those words, waiting and rest, in the same sentence as burial, we are ahead of ourselves. We are eager for resurrection morning and all that that changes, particularly in reference to the grave. But in our endeavor to become like Jesus in his death, we are called to enter into this place of profound quiet and complete trust. It's a trust that comes from an honest evaluation of our helplessness as humans. A trust that still hopes even when all hope is lost. For even at times of hopelessness, in fact, especially in those moments, God is poised to deliver. We are simply called to wait for him. It's profoundly counterintuitive. You know, even as Christians, we usually act as though God's deliverance comes through the enhancing of our own abilities. Or prayers are answered through a slight manipulation of circumstances around us or through blessing the works of our hands, our own efforts. But the final lesson we are to learn in this life is that it is in our utter powerlessness that God acts to accomplish his purposes for us. It has been the theme throughout God's story. Do you remember the Hebrew people trapped between the Red Sea, unpassable, and the pursuing Egyptian army? Terrified, they turn on Moses in desperation. And he replies, the Lord will fight for you. You only have to be silent. Learning to wait in silence and in stillness is the last lesson in life. And so is perhaps the most important. For all that is left is faith in God. It's where becoming like Jesus in his death leads us to, where all striving cease but it is not where it ends. Holy Saturday is but a pause. Resurrection morning awaits.